Hello, I'm here with Dr. Emery, Professor of Psychology and the Director for Children, Families, and Law at the University of Virginia. Dr. Emery is an expert on divorce and mediation, and he'll talk with us about the effects of divorce on children. So thank you for being here, Dr. Emery. Happy to be here. Um, my first question is, how does divorce affect children? Uh, that's not an easy question to answer because it, uh, divorce affects kids in, in different ways. Um, my sort of shorthand of how divorce affects kids is, uh, is really kind of a four-point shorthand, though. Uh, and that is stress, risk, resilience, and, and pain. Um, and what I mean for that is that for you know most children, uh, certainly at least in the short term, uh, divorce is stressful for them. Uh, that's hardly a surprise. Uh, it's stressful economically. It's stressful in terms of oftentimes getting exposed to or involved in the fighting between your parents. Um, it's stressful because your parents may not be doing as good a job at, at that time. They may be preoccupied with their own things. Um, and it's also hard because uh, oftentimes divorce means having less contact with one of your parent, and, and that's a big change and a hard change for, for kids. Um, and getting to the second point, not surprisingly with that, um, that divorce clearly is a risk factor for psychological problems in kids, um, particularly in the area of their behavior and, and conduct but also sometimes for sadness and anxiety and, and problems like that. Um, but at the same time that I think it's important for parents to be aware of the risks associated with divorce for children, um, it's absolutely true that most kids whose parents split up, uh, and when I talk about divorce, we're not just talking about parents who are legally divorced, who are married, we're, we're also talking about parents who may not be married, and, um, but their relationship breaks down. You know, most kids whose parents split up uh, are, are resilient in the sense that they bounce back from all the stress. They don't have lasting psychological problems. Um, it, it's not like if you go through a divorce, your child now is going to be in, need to be in therapy for years and, and years. Um, which gets me to the last and final point, though, so even though most kids are resilient, um, for almost every child who goes through a divorce, there's painful aspects of the divorce. They, they don't have psychological problems but they have painful memories of the past, oftentimes ongoing difficulties in relating to one or the other or both their parents or maybe their, their parents together. Um, uh, you know, sadness, um, longing for, for things that, are, that have happened. Um, I think it's important to keep in mind that pain isn't psychopathology, of course, but, but pain is a significant part of the uh, experience for kids. Um, and probably the most hopeful thing to say to parents is, is that um, whether your child is going to be at risk for psychological problems or be like most kids, is going to be resilient and, and, and doing fine despite the, the pain, uh, is largely up to you. You know, how you parent, how you work together with the child's other parent, the, the stability, the continuity, the love, the s discipline that you and your child's other parent can provide for your kids. So what are some evidence-based practices that can help families through divorce? Yeah. Well, um, I'm certainly uh, an advocate for evidence-based um, practice and uh, uh, very much supportive of, of the effort for, for getting the best information out to parents about what really works. Um, I have to say with a bit of disappointment that there's lots of practices in the divorce area that, that haven't been studied. Um, but there, there's, a, there's a handful of areas where we have pretty good research. And like most things, we need more research. But um, one practice that clearly leads to better functioning of divorced families is my main area of focus, you know, mediation, which involves uh, parents working together to settle their own disputes or their own differences or make plans for their children's future um, in a more cooperative context where they're, they're, even though their marital or intimate relationship is broken down, they're still working together as parents. And, Mediation is one of actually several ways to um, resolve these issues issues outside of the court context. There's other things that some parents may, terms I could just mention that parents may hear, things like collaborative law or um, uh, just negotiating things on, on your own. Uh, there's, there's no uh, 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 
magic that parents can't tap into themselves if they can get past their own distraught emotion and really focus on kids. Um, another practice, because parents do need support, um, because it's a difficult time for them as well as their kids, um, there's good evidence that, that, that good uh, parent support groups can help parents and kids through divorce. Um, by good, generally the best programs are, are focused and structure, structured. They have a, uh, you know, a, a teaching agenda for parents uh, as well as offering support. And, and the teaching agenda is about parenting as well as dealing with your own uh, emotions. Uh, so that's a second evidence-based uh, treatment. And a third um, is uh, uh, groups that are really more focused for kids as opposed to adults. Uh, oftentimes those are based in schools, which is a natural place, of course, because kids are getting together. Um, and again, the, those best support groups, the ones that have the strongest evidence base, are, are structured programs. They're time limited. They teach kids, you know, um, uh, offer kids support, uh, the support of a group for knowing you're not the only kid who's going through this, but also teach kids, you know, concrete uh, skills for uh, coping with divorce, like, for example, that it's not your job to take care of your parents uh, in, in this situation um, and things along those lines. So those are the three interventions with the best evidence base. Are there um, interventions that you would not recommend, the ones that don't have very good scientific evidence for families going through divorce? Well, um, th there isn't a, um, a particular type of intervention that unfortunately we see in some other areas of psychology where um, there just is uh, not only no support for the, for the treatment, but it may be a bad treatment or a negative treatment. Um, but the, the one way I would want to answer that question is, is that um, we have, uh, when parents who can't make decisions uh, themselves about what to do uh, for the kids when they split up, um, have recourse to the courts and having um, judges make decisions for parents. Um, and oftentimes, uh, going through that process, they might go through what's called a, a custody evaluation, where a mental health professional will assess them and assess their, their children. And while um, certainly most judges are, are well-intended and trying to do what's best for kids, and good custody evaluators will use good objective instruments to measure mental health of parents and the relationships, there really is not good evidence that, that judges or evaluators have better answers for parents than parents have for themselves. Um, so I use that to, to remind parents and to come back to parents is that nobody knows, scientifically or otherwise, what's best for your kids better than what you do. And you being not just you, the mom, or the dad, but you, the mom, and the dad, or you, the dad, and the mom together. So speaking of what's best, what's best for children, what are some things that parents should be doing? Um, as they go through divorce to sort of support their children? Um, you know, parents should be doing all the usual things that good parents do, and they should be working real hard to do things the same way they did from before the divorce to after divorce. Um, number one, of course, as always, of course, loving your kids. You want to show your kids you love them, and uh, you don't need to be excessive in showing that. Um, because of the divorce, because parents might feel guilty or worried about that, you should be the same. Um, just like when uh, parents are together, kids of all ages need to hear no, too. So discipline is a part of uh, a parent's job. Um, and that can be a little bit harder after the divorce because you're doing things on your own. Your kids might be upset. You might be guilty, preoccupied. But that's an important part of the process, too. That authoritative parent is both loving and firm and disciplined. Um, and probably th the single most important um, and maybe the single most difficult aspect of what parents can do, and ironically, is that even as a couple decides that our relationship is coming apart, I can't be married to you anymore, I can't live with you anymore, um, we need to find some way to work together um, as parents of our children. Um, uh, even though I'm angry with you, even though I'm hurt at all that's happened, even though I'm scared about the future, I need to find a way to relate to you as my child's other parent. Um, a little phrase that I, I uh, use to summarize that sometimes is it, you need to find a way, parents need to find a way 
to love their kids more than they may hate each other. So, um, you know, what if some, what if parents have difficulty sort of doing this on their own? What kinds of, are there professionals that can help parents as kind of a third party? Sure. What the, types of professionals? Yeah. There, there are many professionals out there who um, are uh, working to help parents in divorce. There's many good um, family therapists who work, want to work with parents who will specialize in divorce. Um, uh, if a, a couple is in couple therapy, for example, and things don't work out, they decide to separate, I recommend that they keep their relationship with that couple therapist at least for a while because that's somebody that they've worked with who can help them to begin to negotiate the coming apart process. Um, there are mediators, um, oftentimes who are mental health professional, and, and rather than automatically going to a lawyer and saying, I'll see you in court, um, I think parents should say to each other, I'll see you in mediation, which means implies something very different about working together. Um, uh, lawyers have different approaches to how they handle divorce, and I'd encourage parents to find lawyers who might mediate themselves, because mental health professionals mediate, but lawyers may mediate as well, or some lawyers do what's called collaborative law, where they they really work to settle the dispute outside of court, to not be unnecessarily adversarial, making threats, and you know, gathering all sorts of nasty information about uh, each other. Um, so uh, there's a variety of, of professionals, um, and uh, parents need to keep in mind that they need to be in charge uh, throughout this process, both in terms of making decisions and finding the best professionals who can help them. I always tell parents, shop around. If you go in to see a professional and it doesn't feel like a good fit, doesn't seem like the right approach, move on and find somebody else who's a better fit for you. So where can parents find some resources? Um, well, there's, there's a variety of resources available to parents, and, and really the sooner you get to good information, the better. Um, I don't want to sound so terribly self-serving, but this is a little bit self-serving. I, I have a book uh, for parents called The Truth About Children and Divorce that has been around for uh, seven or eight years now. It's available in paperback. Um, I tried to make that a resource for parents from everything from dealing with their own emotions to how to talk to kids of different ages to finding a mediator or a lawyer or, or, or very concrete advice on what's the best parenting plan for arranging time for your kids to spend their time across um, two households. Um, there are other good books out there besides my, my own. I, uh, I don't want to start to give a, a list of books, but, but some good resources. But again, you need to shop around. Um, uh, courts can be good sources. A lot of times the courts will have a service unit uh, that's attached to it that might have free or uh, low cost services, particularly for low income parents, uh, and certainly can be a source of, of referrals. Um, uh, it's a time where parents really want to look for uh, education and, and advice. A completely free starting point um, that I maintain a website called emoryondivorce.com um, that any parent can go to as a starting point. And the final resource I would uh, uh, recommend, there is a wonderful national organization. It's a multidisciplinary organization with judges, uh, attorneys, mental health professionals, court workers, called the Association of Family and Conciliation Courts. They have basic information available to parents, and they also uh, can make some uh, referrals available in local communities. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. I enjoyed it.